Welcome to my wardrobe tips and tricks and a little bit of culling. This show is going to be about scarves. I have collected many over the years, so hopefully the breadth of my scarves will give you inspiration for what you have in your own wardrobe. But we're gonna start with what you should be culling because it's the beginning of the year and I think it's really good just to look over what you've got. So I've got below here every scarf I own and I even did a cull last year. But I think first of all about color combinations because scarves can be incredible if you're wearing something that's sort of very draining that you put around your neck and it immediately gives you life. It's also great if you want to do print and texture and um, plain clash, but you want to have some colors that belong together. So I'm gonna show you a few things of those. My best color on my face is blue. That is my biggest pile. And I've got quite a few different ones here, but do I really need them all? I could go over each one individually. I could say that scarf I love because the color is probably my best blue. And when we're looking for our best color, it's the one that if you've got no makeup on and you put it up against your face, you just feel that your skin has the best color of what your skin should be. It doesn't make it too gray or greeny or yellow, that your eye color sort of pops out and that your hair color doesn't become a brassier version of what it is. And then you know it's the perfect color. So this is going to stay. The texture is, is a little bit rough, but it still is a wonderful scarf if I, and I'd probably wear it with navy blue, but I'd also do a mixture of texture. So I'm just gonna very, I'm gonna go to coats here and I'm gonna say if I have this on and I think I, this is a sort of nighttime jacket but I want to just bring something into it that's a bit more daytime there's a tonality about those two colors together so when I take a scarf this wide I will do my little scarf trick and to do the scarf trick properly it needs to be a certain length and a certain width and that's the minimum width I should get so I take both the ends You've seen this to me so often. And I take them round, I, I, I take both my hands in the back and I start to pull them up like that. And then I'll just tuck that scarf in to my jacket because I, I don't want it to look like a shawl on top. I much prefer to tuck it in and get a bunched up amount of fabric there and then make sure at the back you also tuck it in a bit so you don't have a shawl playing down. But that just sits around my face as a great color and even if I wore a much darker blue, it would just bring out the best features of my face. So that's a keeper. The color's good, the length is good, and it works for a myriad of things in my cupboard. Now, I'm not gonna do that with every single scarf, but I wanna show you how to wear them and what I wear them with. So that's my keeper. I've then got this slightly darker blue scarf, which is also very pretty. It's similar to this, but it's a different tone, so I'm gonna keep that as well. Um, I've got this scarf, which I don't think is my scarf. Oh no, what is it? What is it? It's a snotty hoodie thing, which I'm never going to wear. I don't know if it's mine, but that's not staying. It's a great color, but I just don't know what it is. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay, I've got this, which is a lovely cashmere scarf, but it's quite a washing out color on me and I'm sure it will actually have a better home. So even though it's a beautiful shade, there aren't any mothballs in it, mint is not really my shade. Um, so I'm going to actually get rid of that. And when I say get rid of, I'm gonna put them in different piles. Uh, and I do this with my culling all the time. So this pile number one here is going to actually be for the um, glass door, which is a charity there for people who are homeless. This pile here, I might sell to Encore and Saren Sester, and then I'm gonna have a pile here for friends. This is a big scarf. You can see how often I've worn it. Ah, I just see what it's like. I must have, you know, I have a blue scarf fetish. So I'm gonna look at that. And that's a really big scarf. It could even be a throw. And if you have a scarf like this, the way I usually use a scarf like this is I will use it for a long distance plane ride because I kind of love to not use the blanket from a plane if you get a blanket, but to use something and I put a tiny bit of lavender oil on it and I just have that cozy for the flight and I call it my plane scarf. So I'm gonna keep that as my plane scarf. It's a little bit too big for me to wear around my neck. It's nearly a throw for the bed actually, but the color is lovely and it's warm. So that's going to stay, but I might put that in a different location 
depends how much space you've got. Scarves that you can keep for years and years and years. I've had these Louis Vuitton scarves and I don't know if they make them anymore, but you might be able to buy them on eBay. When they first started doing the scarf and it's a very thin cotton mixed with silk and wool or silk and wool actually. And these are the easiest scarves to do my trick with, which I show you. Um, I actually have two of the leopard because I thought I'd lost this and I found it again. So I take it round and I put it back and I put it through. And I think what I like most about these scarves is if I'm wearing something where my legs look slightly short in it, like a crop jean like these ones, if I have the scarf going over my crutch area, you don't kind of know where my crutch begins. So weirdly makes my legs look longer because you haven't got that kind of bit. Um, I love doing double leopard. So when I do this scarf, I do it with black, but I also do it with my Topshop coat like that. And I just, I like the whole, I think it makes the coat more expensive. This, I mean, this wasn't a cheap coat, but it's, it's not a designer coat. And it's a coat which I bought because I love the length. But I think having that extra leopard there adds something to the coat. So I show you without. It's nice too, but I think the, cut, the um, scarf gives it something special. So think about mixing patterns together that are the same pattern. But give me a next shot because it's such a fake fur faux coat. <laughs> such a fake fur faux coat. So these um, scarves I keep forever. And if you look at cost per wear, you know, when you're thinking, shall I buy a scarf? These scarves probably, I remember they were so expensive when I bought them. They were probably like 300 pounds each or even more. But I've had this for 15 years and I nearly lost it, but I didn't. And then I did buy in a few other colors. Um, Lila has a color, in fact, in her bedroom, which I wanted to show you now. Stolen by my daughter, how many of you identify? All right. I'm gonna show you another color combo that I like to do. So again, I'm gonna do that magical twisting moment, like that. And this color combination, if you can find scarves with a print, and then you find a jacket, which has a similar color in it, that's the way I love to clash print. So it's sort of, you know, it's got the blue and the green in slightly different tones, but I think that it just gives a look that works. It's very shiny, this coat. It's very evening-ish. And perhaps having the scarf with it gives it a bit more of a daytime feel. But I do wear these two together and they kind of go. Another scarf I've just bought and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. It's a piece of fabric I bought in India. And things like this can lurk in my cupboard doing nothing with them or they become something. But when I bought it, I remember thinking, is it like this? Um, jacket that I'm wearing so I just wanted to have it over it but that oddly I could wear it together but because there's a shine and shimmer to this and a shine and shimmer to that it's not doing the same as what the other scarf did before but this I will go back to because if you ever go traveling that's when funnily enough I buy probably half my scarves when I'm on trips when I'm in a bazaar in Morocco or India or somewhere and when you can buy old bits of textile. So taking something that could be a scarf, so could I do the scarf trick with this one? I could, it's very thick though. I could do it with a bigger coat. And funny enough, I would do this with um, olive green because I think turquoise and olive green are so beautiful together. Um, and if I wanted to just take something that was a utilitarian coat, and give it a bit of glamour, I might do those two things together. Um, this is the um, Costco from last year, and I haven't actually got some glasses in it. It works, but whether I keep it like that or I turn it into a skirt was my other idea. So I thought to myself, I've got it here, that when I bought these bits of fabric, I had this skirt in mind, which is a similar fabric. It's got a little shimmer going through. It might be a tiny bit thinner, but I thought, could I get this to become a really beautiful skirt like that, which I'd wear slightly A-line and get a navy bit of stretchy fabric because it would be easy for me to make that. But I appreciate too that you have to cut things correctly. 
So I'd actually probably have to cut it that way because that's going to hang better um, and make that skirt. And the fabric cost me in India about eight pounds. Well, the whole thing was 30 pounds and there's about four, three meters. So I could make a skirt and something else and it wouldn't be so expensive, but unique and a one-off. So I, I love buying scarves like that, vintage scarves. And you can tell on the back that it's been handmade. Um, if you're ever in the markets abroad, you'll see when you turn something around, if it's been machine stitched or hand stitched, and you can really tell this has been hand stitched because the stitching is uneven and there's double threading where they've um, sewn it and cut the thread. So I know that that took hours and hours and hours to make. So I felt comfortable for the price I paid for it. Um, and I did buy it in a few colors. So that is gonna go on my pile actually to make things into something. And I really want to do that this January. I've got a pile of clothes that I'm also gonna go through that I don't wear anymore because they're too tight or they just don't fit right. And I might make a dress a top. But those are all gonna go into that pile. You can see the colors I got them in. That's, I mean, that's just fabulous. This still might seem a huge pile of scarves to you, but I do wear them. So those I keeping, I have it in the gray and weirdly I wear the gray the least. So I'm thinking, would I sell that? It's a Louis Vuitton scarf, people would love it. This is a cashmere scarf I got in India and I adore the colors. It's incredibly soft. I'll have it till I die. Um, it's really good quality and it's a weird brown, but when I wear it with a sort of soft taupe, um, I've got like, I'll just give you an idea of how I'd style this. White shirt on to show you this better. I um, have this coat that I bought in the sale from Givenchy three years ago and I haven't worn it much. And I think what scarves can do is help you wear coats that don't naturally suit you as a shade. So if I wear this, even if I wear it with white, which should make the, the sort of very, very washing out um, camel color of this coat. If I wear it with white, it helps it a bit. But as soon as I bring a scarf in, which has that tone, but has more strength in it, it really helps my wearing it. So I'm just going to get this one and show you um, what it does to it. So that's normal. And then I take my little baby, my little baby and tuck it in. And it's just brought more color to my face because the brown in it is the color of my hair and it's not washing me out so much because there's a strength of color again in it. And then it just gives a lovely tonality to the coat. So scarves and coats to me are best friends. So I will be keeping that one. I want to fold up as I go along. I have had lots of wraps that I use for the pool, but this one I love so much because of the length of it, because how I use these, um, on holiday is I could have it as a scarf, which is fine, just like that. I could even do my trick with it. So this is like that multi-purpose moment. It's a bit of cotton, but it just brings a beautiful color and it's that eye cat design. So if I had a, just a blue coat, this is that old Zara coat, but even though it's cotton and the coat's shearling, that's just a really fun, brings it to life kind of scarf. It's not warm, but it adds something. And I like, again, the drapes. So I've done the drapes. I'm not showing you short legs. I'm just covering my crutch with the drape like that and tucking it in, but it brings more life to the face. That's my multi-purpose one because I'll wear it also in the summer as a dress. This kind of scarf, if you can get this size, like this, Cotton Pareo, I also wear in the summer, I'll take it round there and I'll just, cross it, which many of you might know how to do, but I'm just gonna show you. Cross it like that and bring it there. So I might wear it like that for the beach and it's covering my knees, which I like nowadays. But then in the evening, I would just put a plain, I've got lots of these plain little bits of cotton, which are little scarves and I'll just take that there and turn it around and it turns it into quite a fun dress can't really tell with some knees, but you get the general gist, and then with a big pair of earrings. So if I go away for three days and I want to pack literally hand, hand, hand luggage, like not even a suitcase hand luggage, this scarf has been with me on many trips to go from the beach, to go from the plane around my neck to the beach to an evening outfit. If I lost this, I'd be so upset. 
And what it makes me realise is it's interesting to look at things you wear the most in your wardrobe and why you wear them. And then think to yourself, if I were to do that again or find that again, what would I like? So if you're thinking about the sales, if I found this in a turquoise or in a sort of another colour that I'd love, I would buy it again because I know how much wear I've had out of it as a Pareo. And funny enough, I do that also with this. This is another Louis Vuitton one. I just take it like that, twist it round. It's a little bit longer. Imagine it with an elegant evening shoe, like that. And then it's a question of finding the right belt because you want it to look like it's going to be there. So I usually turn in that, so it just gives me that nice shape. I could wear it straight, but I think things are better belted. And then I've looked at my belt here. And I sometimes wear it with this very thin gold belt. I bought this gold belt about 15 or 18 years ago from Prada and I didn't lose it, thank God, because in the summer, it comes with me on every summer holiday and I put it around every one of these scarves to wear something out in the evening. So it just gives it a little extra and I might then have a little gold earring and a pair of flat gold sandals. So that is a stayer in the wardrobe. It's very rare that I wear black but sometimes I do end up wearing black. And the thing that saved me wearing black is this scarf, which I was given for my birthday last year from Saint Laurent. But I think anyone could go to a dressmaker and get the scarf made or buy a bit of fabric and do some French seaming and make it themselves. It's got little weights in the end. I've lost a weight from one end, which makes it hold it down. But I think what's utterly brilliant is I like the shape. So when I wear it, just do it the right way. I take that top bit there and I just put it round and bring it down the other side. And it's got this nice natural little formation here. So it just goes in a V as opposed to being round like that. And I think that gives it something extra. But immediately it's lifted the black. So round my face I have the silver and it enables me to do the black outfit, put this on and feel it lifts my face. So if I even put a black jacket on top, I'm still thinking that I can look decent in it. Like that. It, it just works so well. So if you look at it like that, it's immediately made this outfit quite fun. And if you look at it without, I'm a little bit drained and tired, you see it under my eyes. So this is like my secret weapon. It folds into nothing. It's like nearly a piece of makeup. So look at the design. I want you to take a picture of it if you'd like to, but it's like a sail, a double sail. And I think that's the cleverest bit of how to take a piece of silver or ganza and make a scarf. Because then when you put it like that, you get that little round kerchief bit. So I never want to lose this. It's got the weights at the end, which you could buy. So easy to copy. And I'm sure these lovely people gave it to me as my joint birthday present. Spent a little bit of money on it because it was from Saint Laurent. So that's staying. So I'm still wearing black and I'm thinking, what do I wear with it? I'll tell you what I wouldn't wear with it. This is just me. I wouldn't reach for a bright pink scarf in contrast because I'm not good at wearing bright color and black. I'm just not. So if I put that on there, you know, it's an easy way to think let's do that color choice together. But I would much prefer to do this color choice with burgundy. We look at it with the black. Not everyone has a burgundy jacket and you might not suit burgundy, but I just want to show you color with color. So I'm gonna take off the black there and I'm gonna put the aubergine with it. But I just think that's a softer combination to wear together. And it lifts the burgundy because when I wear burgundy on its own, it's really drainy on me, but as a color, I find it beautiful and rich. So if I look at it like that, and if I look at it like that, it's slightly, I'm darker circled. So scarves, magical color scarves, color with color. Another one I would do is this. I love this scarf and I got this scarf also in India years ago. I've made a collection of these over the years, but it's a very soft rose. So that hard burgundy. This is probably the scarf I'd wear with this um, jacket. Not the right lipstick shade, but really soft, pretty colors together. Now what's interesting is if I look at these two, because these colors are great, but these colors are very strong for me. 
and I'm thinking, do I prefer this cottony one to this cashmere one? Because a friend of mine really admired this and I loved it, it's from me and M. But I just found my wrapping version of it, let me just do it again. It, it was a bit too narrow for me to do my little trick. So I don't know what it is about that. I don't think the colors are as good. So I'm gonna get rid of it because I don't want it in the wardrobe when I've got the other one that works. Okay, then I've got this friend, I got this. I love this. You know, sometimes you see mad things and you think, is there a place for that in my wardrobe? This was in a warehouse last year and it was 20 pounds. It's so soft. It's just the most deliciously warm thing. And I love the length and I've worn it with many, many things. I'd also wear it with that jacket. I think I'd do it with a coat because it's so long and maybe with a jacket le length, it doesn't work. But it's just like, it's like wearing a blanket. But I am seeing here, this is another thing, moss and dirt so moss love dirt i'm noticing here it's not smelling weird but there's obviously something i've spilt all over that and if i put that in my cupboard now come april if there was a moth around he'd smell that and he'd go munch 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 so it's got to go and be cleaned so always check for those kind of things okay back to color clash of color clashes i have this coat from mango I think which I got last year and the yellow is not quite my yellow do you see it's a little bit too it's very acid slightly taking my feature away but I got this scarf this faux fur scarf I can't remember where it's from Zara and it was literally 12 pounds and it's gone over things even though I might resemble to an extent the Ikea flag I mean the Swedish flag that just putting that over it gives it something which allows me to wear that incredibly strong color more successfully because there's some other colors added in that are in the scarf that are my best colors like the blue and the and the sort of purpley color and then the yellow and the orangey yellow have a relationship so I prefer to see this um, jacket worn with this scarf than just to be worn on its own. So what to wear with black? I love wearing neutrals with black so this is one of my favorite scarves that I've used for years, um, which is kind of that rough cotton mix with a bit of wool, but it's a geometric print and it works quite nicely. It's going to be difficult for me to go around because it is that narrow shape, but I do that there and just softens. And I might just wear that around the office. It's quite thick, but it sort of works. It's shorter. Would I wear it that way? I feel it's stunty that way. So what I do, the more classic way of wearing this, which is just around me like that. And I could do with this scarf because otherwise I won't get the length in it. So I probably would do that. I just, I like actually the length of the scarf and the pattern. It works well together. So if they're too thick, don't go around and do that double twist because it won't work. But I will keep this because it softens any black I'm wearing. And it's a nice geometric print. Um, this is a scarf that I got in India again. And when you have a square scarf, it's interesting to know how to do it. So, you know, the very old fashioned way would just be to sort of do something, hang on, do something like that, you know, or like that. Granny, granny ladies. So with something that's square, I take it like that and I usually make it a half diamond so I'm folding over that much to give me that length again. Turn it around like that. And then I'll go towards the ends and I'll bring it up again. And then I'll come around with both my hands, pull it back like that. And just have a really nicely falling scarf. And that's got great colors in it. It's got a really nice trim in it. I could wear it with many colors and it's just softened a black jumper. This is interesting because this, it's so difficult, these ones. These are really pretty scarves, but what the issue I have with them is they're very traditional. And when I was in India recently, I saw so many of these scarves. So I was thinking, how could I make that work for me? And I think the only way it can work for me is if I find something very textured to wear with it that will break up the classicness of it. This is a very modern shaped jacket with a old fashioned scarf and let's see how that works. So I'm just putting on an old you know, off-whitey top. 
I'm going to put on this coat that I bought from Acme years ago and I took off the sleeves because I wanted to wear a fun sleeve under it. Which this is not, so it doesn't work so well with it actually. I'm doing it to show you the scarf. Okay. And then I'm taking that. I'm just going to see if that works. It's quite nice. The colours actually are very pretty together. Um, and it does, I think the sleeve here is really wrong. So I'd want to have some fluted mad sleeve with this and then it would work. But I think there's some relationship with it. So it's just a question of checking and, and trying on and then going back and thinking what else could it work with. And if you keep trying things with it and it doesn't work, I know this seems really tedious and one's going through every single thing, but this is about really, when you say no to something, it doesn't have a place in your life and you've tried it with quite a few things, get rid of it. Let's talk about white and gray. I have, I'm gonna put on this really old coat. This is a 20 year old coat from Jill Sandra. I got this in the sale. Good things to buy in sales, ladies. Um, coats, because if there's a coat and it's a designer coat and you love it and you never would have bought it full price, but you craved it and tried it on, this coat actually is about 15 years old. It's a very classic style. I feel I'm keeping it for Lila because very soon it'd be the right size for Lila. But when I'm wearing these colors, I love to be tonal. So one of my favorite scarves is this old scarf I got from India. I keep saying that, don't I? And although it has the print on it, like the green one, because it's pale um, ivory with gray, it sort of, to me, doesn't look so old fashioned. I just love that combination together of keeping, keeping the colors all the same. I've got this white one, which I probably won't keep. I don't know if I'll keep this actually. Let me look at this. Because I haven't, as you can tell, worn it. It's a medium Zara 17 pound thing. I think I bought it because I thought, what if I make it Pareo? I shouldn't have about it, but it could nearly be a tablecloth. You see, I put that on now and I think, oh, that's lovely, let me keep it. But will I actually wear it? Maybe in the summer I will wear it. I think I, I like the fact that it's white on white. It's not cashmere it's when you want to have the purpose of a scarf without feeling overheated to go for a more cottony look and it's just made that jacket more summery i could wear it then with a t-shirt always take the labels off zara so that's going to stay all right i'm going to do a very very quick yay or nay this scarf i've had forever i don't know who gave it to me it's really pretty but i remember it was a very narrow width and i just don't know if i'm going to wear it it's pretty but I just think I'm not gonna wear it because I haven't worn it for two years. So I'm going to put that to sell because I think it's a really pretty cashmere scarf and I will be able to sell it. Um, this is one of the ones that Zara do. Every year they do these cashmere scarves and I always buy them. They're great, they're about 89 pounds or you know, 69 pounds. I give them to men as gifts. They're really thick. I use them also on a plane and I have this color and Lila, I gave her for Christmas, a pale gray one. But they're, they're great, they don't ball and they just act as this kind of mini blanket. So that's in there. Um, that is a summer Pareo, so I'm gonna keep some Pareos, but I do like that, it's an Isabel Rouen Island. This, on the other hand, is a scarf I'm gonna get rid of. And the reason I'm gonna get rid of it, it's huge again, but it's not cashmere and on wool coats it pills do you know what i mean the the stuff comes off so i'm going to actually get rid of that because it was zara really inexpensive impulse purchase isn't cashmere won't keep me warm a lot of synthetic in it looks nice for a few weeks and then it goes off so that's going to go away to be given away oh i forgot about this one <laughs> you know that feeling you discover something in your cupboard I think I bought this because I like the mixture. Oh, I've got enough scarf. Please, Lord, let me not buy more. Please, Lord, let me not buy more. But I think I loved the fact there was a little bit of silver and gold in it. And that is pretty and I will wear it. Okay, so that's staying. This is a real classic. It's a very old scarf of my grandma's. I'm gonna keep it. That's a plain green I wear when I go in the countryside. That's, oh, what's that? <laughs> That's a bit of a cashmere and silk number in a really pretty shade. And that, just to do a last colour combination one, because this is very nice discovery. There's a hole in it, but it's not, oh, 
Are they moth holes? Hmm. Those look like they've been eaten by something. Okay. Great colour. And for something like this, this is where I love wearing colour with colour. Because that's so pretty together, the colours. And again, it's the shininess of the fabric with the mat of the scarf. And just good colours. And I'll wear it with a pair of navy trousers or blue jeans like I've got on. Okay, ladies. So... I'm now going to show you how I put my scarves away so that I see them and how I keep them. So let's then go downstairs. So this is where I store what I'm going to wear all the time because I do have enough space in my house to store things that I use for styling and then what I use every day. So scarves here, we've got down to still a lot of scarves, but I've done them by colour. So I've done plain on one side and I've done print on the other then I know quickly print with print. I know where everything is because I folded them so the top shows, whereas if I'd done a pile like that, um, it would just topple all the time. So you can do that in your own drawers. And then I put belts in the middle. I usually use these Muji containers, but I've run out. There's one which has four in it, which I might put in there and put the belts in. And whilst we're here, just to show you how I store the rest of my stuff, but I do have a lot of Apple things because I'm always using my phone and I'm always traveling. So I have all these for my travel things. There's a huge amount of AirPods there because I have, I'm the world's worst person with an AirPod. And then I have the rings I use the most, Trini London ring and my other little rings in here. And then necklaces I love are the pens, long necklaces. This is not all my jewelry, but this is what I wear a lot. This is my kind of memorabilia. And it seems like it's a very small amount of memorabilia. I have got things in storage, but I'm trying to, you know, I have everything Lina ever did. But apart from that, I'm trying not to just store so many things. Everything now is online. So I don't have so many files and things. They're all at the office. But, you know, there's just mixtures of stuff. And um, then we'll do next time, because I've half done it, is my handbag section. And there's a few things in there I wear and there's a few I don't, so that will be next time round. Thanks for watching, bye.